Hello, it's your open source advocate, and I am back to talk about another chat platform, another alternative or an option to Slack that is available for free. It's open source. Um, it's really, really great. I did this one also a few years ago, and uh, at the time I was not as impressed with Mattermost as I was with Rocket Chat, which I did a video just recently on previously. Um, but I'll say Mattermost has really stepped it up in the last few years, and it's looking really, really good. Um, so before we get started, I want to go into how I set this up. So again, I, I use DigitalOcean, and uh, I'll go through this uh, completely here in a minute, but I'm a huge fan of DigitalOcean, um, so, so the best thing about them is just how easy it is to set these things up. Uh, so when you, when you log into DigitalOcean, you can go to this button and hit Create Droplets. That's where we're at. Droplets are what they call their virtual servers, and I'm just going to leave it on Ubuntu. I'm going to jump over here to Marketplace. When this loads up, again, you can see all of these really great, amazing free things that you can run um, on your own, and I'll, I'll cover a bunch of these, so I'm super excited to see that they have these one-click installs uh, here available for me on, on DigitalOcean. They've really, really added to their library over the years, and, and they continue to do that, so um, it's super exciting. So I'm just going to scroll down here until I find Mattermost, so these are in alphabetical order, and here it is. So I highlight Mattermost, or you highlight any, of, any one of these others that you want on DigitalOcean. Once you've highlighted the one that you want, uh, you come down here and you can pick your, your performance types. I'm going to stick with standard, but they do have other performance types if you need more, if you're doing this for some, some level of production that you're going to use it for in a company, um, you know, it's more than a few people anyways. You might want to look at these options and see what they cost, but I'm going to stick with this one. Now again, when you get here, they automatically highlight the $40 a month plan. You don't have to use that. Just click this little left arrow and you'll get down here to the $5 and $10 a month. Um, again, I'm going to use the $10 for this uh, per particular video. The $5 might work fine. I haven't tried it, but but I know $10 works, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. So once I've selected my, my server size and, and, and how much it's going to cost, I just move down a little bit more. So again, if you're doing this for production, enabling backups is a really smart thing to do. It tells you right here that it would be $2 a month to have that. Totally worth that price, that, that $24 a year for that peace of mind that you know that that you're not going to have to worry about that server. So as we keep going down, um, there's block storage. So if you're going to have a lot of media that's going to be uploaded with Mattermost, you want you might want to add block storage. And again, I'm not going to go into that this time, but we will in the future. Um, but but block storage is there, so that's more storage space uh, for less price, basically. So you can see up here, you get 50 gigabytes of storage space, two terabytes of transfer. 2 gigabytes and, and a virtual CPU. Um, so this is really a, a pretty decent machine for what we're going to be using it for. Um, again, you can pick a, a server farm that's in a location near you. So, so for wherever you are geographically, pick that. I'm just going to leave it on New York. Um, next, they've got these additional options. So you can pick any of those. And again, SSH keys are always a good plan. I'm still going to go and show you what to do with the, the password that gets generated. Finally, you, you give it a name, so I'm just going to name this thing. Um, I've already named them Mattermost Tests a few times, so Mattermost-Test-I dash dash, think it's three. And I'm going to go here, so you can type tags. If you have a production system in DigitalOcean where you host servers for other people, for clients, and you have tons and tons and tons of droplets, putting tags on there with those client names can help you filter those things down really quickly. So, so tags are super useful. I don't have that issue. I don't do that right now. So, so this is easy for me. So I'm just going to click on create droplet and it's going to jump us over to the droplet creation page. And you can see I've got my Mattermost uh, three server. So they added a one on there for me. Um, so I've, I've already got one with that name. So they added a one on this. So it's generating that new one. Once it's completed, we can go and log in through the terminal and I'll show you what that looks like here. So if I go into my terminal, I've actually got a little application running here that lets me hit my current server, that, that one that said number three back here. Um, it lets me hit this one using a URL instead of the IP address. There's a few problems with it. It's kind of a reverse proxy software, so I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna quit out of that, and we'll, we'll just go and log into this new server. So I'm on that server right now. I'm gonna exit out of that server, and we'll go and get to the new server. So let's go get that IP address. We're going to copy that. Once you've got the IP address copied, you go back into your terminal and you do SSH root. Now, DigitalOcean always makes it a root account by default. You should really go back and change this to a non-root account and then get the software installed that way. Um, it's always much more safe to do that. 
Um, again, SSH keys can help with security and so many other things, but for now we're, we're doing this kind of the short and quick way. So I'll paste in my IP address and I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm gonna say yes, and it's gonna prompt me for this password. So this gets emailed to you through the account that you have set up with DigitalOcean. So I'm gonna go get that email and I'm gonna copy the password and then I'll be right back to put it in. Okay, I've got my password. I'm gonna paste it in. I'm gonna hit enter. Oh, it didn't like it. Try again. I'm gonna paste in my password, hit enter. I waited too long to enter the password. And I'm gonna paste it in again. So we want that same password again that they sent you. And now we have to create a new password. And one more time. And now we've got the password set up. So first thing I always do is update the system to make sure it's all up to date. Now we're logged in as root. We don't actually need this pseudo part, but never hurts to do that. So I'm going to let this thing run the updates real quick and then we'll be back. Okay, the server's up to date and I'm ready to go and actually log into my droplet. So I'm going to recopy this IP address. Now the thing they don't tell you when you first start up this one like they did in Rocket Chat where they give us a little message about how to connect and what we needed to edit is that you, you need an actual special port to connect. So I'm going to paste in the IP address and I'm actually going to go put HTTP on the front of this because it kind of doesn't like it if I don't. And then you need port 8065. So it's going to come to our Mattermost server, and the first thing it wants to know is what email address do I want, and we'll say it fix it till Rio's fine. I'm going to choose my username, my password, and we'll go create account. Don't need to save it. So teams that I can join, there are no teams right now. So what teams are is kind of like workspaces in Slack, if you've ever used that. So you get these different workspaces set up inside of Mattermost, and then you invite people to those workspaces. So if you wanted to use this for multiple divisions in a company that, that don't really need to have crosstalk, you could set up teams for each one of those. If you're trying to host this for a whole bunch of different entities, you set up teams for those entities and then only give them access to their team. Um, so it, it's that kind of concept. So I'm gonna create a new team and I'm gonna call this test out MM and hit next. So it asks me if this is okay as far as my team URL, which looks fine. And here we are. And it's gonna take us through a little walkthrough first. So I'm gonna click on next. It tells you about the different applications and, and platforms that it runs on. So iOS, Android, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, which is great, perfect for me because I'm a Linux guy and an iOS guy. And then it says you're all set. So we hit next and it finishes up and it brings us into the first channel. So the default channels are always here. Um, this one that says off topic, so kind of your things that don't have any particular reason for put, people putting them in, just fun discussion topics. Town Square, where, where everybody can kind of gather, I guess you'd say, in the town square and have interactions. And then of course you can create other channels. Now, right off the bat it says, hey, your email notifications haven't been configured, so it's telling me, and every time I log in, it's gonna give me this warning. So, so just be aware of that. Until you fix that, it, it's gonna give you that warning. So I'm gonna close that little window for now so we can see everything on the screen here. Um, if I wanna create other teams, I can do that here. So I'm an admin, I have a lot more in my menu than your regular user is going to have. Um, first up is account settings. So right off the bat, you can see I can set my full name. I've got all of this information that, that gets set when I log in. I can set a profile picture. I can put my position at the company, my nickname, all of these things that are base information about you as a person. You can set up your security so you can change your password here. Um, the one thing I noticed is that it does not have an option for two-factor authentication right now. Maybe there's a plugin. I haven't really looked into the plugins and extensions yet, but for now it's just set up your password and change your password here. So notifications, you can turn notifications on and off. You can set up which notifications you get, when you get them. So email notifications, once you set up the email uh, configuration stuff that you need. Uh, mobile push notifications you can set up and then so on. So it's it's pretty, um, pretty, pretty handy there to have the notification set up. Just This is again for my account, so each user will have this for their account. The display, so you can change the theme, and it does have some pretty, pretty nice themes. So there's a really dark theme, there's kind of a middle of the line theme slightly different sidebar color. 
um, and then you just hit save and you're done with themes so you can change the clock display and how it shows um, you can teammate name display I mean you can really edit a lot here just from your personal perspective of what you want to see sidebar so the channel switcher you can turn that on or off over here I don't see any reason to turn it off so I'm gonna leave it on and finally advanced settings so send messages um, if you hit control enter does that send a message or if you just hit enter does that send a message um, and so on like that so so little settings like that that you can run through um, if we go back in here real quick so I can create private channels and I can create direct messages um, so public channels are things that you want everybody to be able to find and and discover um, so if we create a public channel that we call um, DevOps and this is development operations topics and you can put a header on it I guess uh, DevOps info something like that so once we do this so it's, it's defaulted to public you could change it to private right here it doesn't have to remain public um, and there we go so now I've got this DevOps info channel and you can see DevOps info DevOps up here at the top and here at the top you can take some different actions for the channel. You can edit the channel header, edit the channel purpose, rename the channel. So lots of uh, lots of things that you can do for the actual channel itself from up at the top. Um, then down here, of course, it's chat. So you type in a chat message. Um, because they always have interesting names for your servers. Um, there you go. So this goes into chat. Anybody else that was set up on the system, of course, would see this and get some level of notification depending on their settings. So right here you can see there's only one member. That's me. Um, you can pin posts to the top. You can search. You can do at, you know, ampers or at and, and do at recommendations. You can flag different posts. Um, so there's quite a bit here that you can do. Um, so when I say more, this is where you can search for channels. So if I say dev ops it may not show me just because I'm already part of those channels so there's no other channels for me to join um, if if I wasn't a member then the only member of all the channels then this would search and show me the different channels that are available just by typing in information that I'm looking for uh, private channels work the same way except it defaults to private so no need to go into that private channels not everybody can join you have to invite them explicitly to the channel um, so so it's not the same as a public channel where people can just stumble upon it and join it and of course direct messages just chat between you and somebody else maybe you and a couple of people and those are also private type chats all right now let's get into the good part because this is the part you want to see so we're going to go into the menu as the admin and down here you're going to see system console so this is not what i would expect when i was looking for settings um, i had to click around to find this a little bit they do have integrations um, manage members team so there's a lot of things here that you can do create a new team so remember what I talked about that the different teams are different um, entities where people can can be a part of it or not be a part of it completely um, that's where you set this stuff up you can leave this team if you don't want to be a part of this team anymore and then keyboard shortcuts report a problem so a little bit of information down here at the bottom with help and about the actual application of course log out at the very bottom so we want to go to system console and this opens up a really nice console that we can use and see some stats about the site. Now, I don't have a lot of data in here yet, so this isn't super exciting, but this has some real potential. I really like this dashboard. This is something that was not in here a few years ago when I, when I looked at Mattermost. Over here on the left, we have a lot of information. So we can see team statistics. You can look at users again and manage users. You can see logs for things that are happening on the system. And then you get into settings. So down here, we wanna see settings. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to click on configuration of the channel. So here I can say, what's my site URL? What is this thing expecting to be my site URL? So where earlier when I had the reverse proxy set up on my other server, I didn't set this and that's probably my problem. Um, I just didn't have time to go and test it. So if, you, if you're gonna set up DNS where you have this being my chat dot, you know, my company dot org or whatever, this is what you would put here and then down here you can set up the port so what what's listening what port it's listening on and here you would put that port into uh, the URL if you're going to forward port 80 to port 443 so that they're always redirected to the secure version of your site you're going to click true right here as you continue to scroll down so you can set up connection security this is a pretty nice thing 
Um, you can say TLS, you can say none. Of course, most of the time you want TLS. You can set up a TLS certificate file, but they also have Let's Encrypt if you want to set that up. So there's true faults. You have to enable a few things and do some configuration for that, but it's there and it's probably totally worth it if you're running this for any kind of any level of production or, or actual use. All right, so when you go into the web server mode, there's different ways that um, information can be set up for this to be a, a, a type of web server. Um, so you want gzip files uncompressed or disabled. gzip is defaulted, I would leave it alone. And then you can say reload configuration from disk. This is a pretty nice uh, feature because you may want to export the configuration and bring it back in if you have to reset up the site for some reason. And then you can also purge all caches um, right here. So a lot of features built into the basic settings of the site. Next you can go to localization, set up your languages users and teams so again you have a lot of settings here for your users and teams privacy which is really nice to see in some open source software um, logging which is important for a lot of companies especially if you have open records requirements you have to meet authorization so email authorizations you can do GitLab um, which is nice I love GitLab it's one one thing that I use all the time so I'm gonna do a, a video about GitLab at some point um, but this is a really a really nice uh, integration here that you can set up. Multi-factor authentication. So here it is. This is what I was looking for earlier. I just need to go through and actually get it set up. So if I turn this to true, uh, users with AD or LDAP or email login can add multi-factor authentication to that uh, account using Google Authenticator. So I don't know if this is going to work for me because I don't have AD or LDAP. Um, I'm just logging in plain Jane to the site through the, through the regular registration process. Um, I'll go back and mess with it and then see what we find. So sign up. Can people sign up? Yes, no. If they can't, how do you get them signed up? You can send them an invitation email, I imagine. Passwords, so you can set up password uh, requirements. Public links. Sessions, so how long do your sessions last before it times out and forces someone to log back in. Um, and then connections, so lots of settings and configuration that you can do here to try to make this run really, really smooth. Um, cores is really important, so if you're doing cross-origin, um, any kind of site with cross-origin requirements, you can you can set up your cores here. So notifications, you can select email and mobile push and set those up. Integrations, you can do custom integrations. And then external services, so there's different ways to set up integrations besides what they have just in their marketplace, I believe. And then they have plugins, so this is in beta. It's telling you right here that it's in beta. But there's management for plugins. Um, Jira apparently has a plugin. My my primary professional job, we use Jira. This would be a really great plugin for for us there. Zoom. So Zoom got a bad name recently um, in the open source community and the Mac community because they were starting up a web server in the background and then persisting it even if you tried to delete it and re-downloading their software, which would give a nefarious person access to your camera, your microphone, things like that. And it's kind of a no-no. So Apple went in there and kind of wiped that out and took them off the board for that. I believe they fixed it. I think they apologized. Maybe they didn't really realize what they were doing when they tried to make it super easy for you to get back on a Zoom call, but just be aware of that. So when you set up Zoom, you know you're you're kind of taking your chances. Maybe they're maybe they're sorry. Don't know. Um, so files and storage, you can do the settings there. Customization, so you can do custom branding. So you can actually change the way this thing looks. Emojis, again, I've talked about custom emojis. Um, be very wary when you allow custom emojis because people have the best intentions but they don't always realize that they're upsetting other people with the emojis they upload. Um, GIFs, which is pretty cool. So this is in beta, but um, lots of the chat things use GIFs and Giphy and other sites to, to go get GIFs really easily. So you can set up different things for your posts. You can have legal and support information on your site and link people to that. Uh, Mattermost app links, which are here. And then so um, this is the app download pa uh, page link, so you can change these links if you need to. And then you can do rate limiting so people can't just spam, 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 spam with lots and lots of, you know, just doing one letter enter, one letter enter, and trying to spell out a word vertically. Um, all kinds of crazy, silly stuff like that. Your database information is here, so you don't really want to mess with this. It got set up by default. Um, you can go in and actually get the MySQL password out of the DigitalOcean terminal. Uh, but don't I would not change it until you know what that is so um, wouldn't mess with any of this stuff unless you know what you're doing absolutely 
then there's developer information so if you want to do development on this you can and then again back to experimental and all of the things that are experimental settings um, I love the experimental part and I love to see that there because it means that they're actively working on these things and adding more features as they go um, so other is down here and you can see the addition and license information here um, you can upload a license key, so if you license the enterprise version of this, they'll give you a license key and you can upload the license key, and that'll unlock even more features. So, uh, Mattermost has a ton of configuration. It's got a, a really nice setup. I, I love this statistics dashboard that they've got here. Um, really great. And here's a lot of information. So here's the administrator's guide, troubleshooting forum, commercial support, and about Mattermost. So you can log out again. Um, so when I click on this, I can go back over here and you can see we're back into our channel. Now that we have the admin panel kind of gone through, I do want to go through some important settings. If you're setting this up for production again, you'll, you'll want to change some of these things that I'm doing because I'm, I'm just doing this to record the video. But a couple of important things is when you get down here under general, under users and teams, you want to have enable account creation or your users won't be able to create their own account. Um, if you want to do invite only, then, then you know you can read these different uh, pieces to, to see do you need to set this to false. The other part is down here under security, and you want to do sign up. So you want to have require email verification set to true if you want this ver person to verify. That's my correct email address. If you don't really care, then you can set, keep it on false. So right now you can see I can't even change this. Um, so first I need to say enable open server, which means that anyone can go in here and, and this is I can't change this because I set up the email <laughs> verification system so you have to set up your email configuration this will become enabled so next when you set this to true I'm going to say you know let anyone sign up without having to be invited so if you want to do an invite only type setup then you'll definitely want to look at this and, and make sure that this is set to false but otherwise you want to set it to true so that people can actually sign into the system um, and then last last of all enable email um, invitations again um, you can set this to true, but it's not going to work until you, you know, set up your email um, to, to you configure the email server information. So I'm going to save my change here just to enable sign up. And it should be saved. I'm going to go into my Firefox browser. So you can see here, when I came to the page, there's sign in, but there's no registration. So I'm going to refresh. Let's see if we get the registration link like we expect now. Yes, so I don't have an account to create one now. So you can see this, this line now shows up by turning on that, that single, um, by enabling that configuration. So what's my email address? So I'll put in bob at testbob.com. Username, we'll say testerbob. And password. And create the account and don't want to save it right now so teams I can join so you see I don't I don't have any teams available to me but I can create a team this is another setting that you can turn off as an administrator so that new users can't create teams but they they can join teams so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here I'm going to go back into the main view and then I'm going to say add members to a team so now I see tester Bob I'm going to click on him and I'm going to say add so now tester Bob should be set up to see my team. Let's get out of select team. There we go. Okay, so the next time you have somebody go back in and refresh, you need to have them remove the select team from the URL if they're if they're keep if they keep coming back to that to that screen. Um, they they may need to clear that out just like I did. So he can see right here immediately on the off topic. Uh, well, first we have to go through this little wizard that tells you everything about the site. And now for off topic, he'll see that, that I joined the channel and that it's the system. And then he can go to town square. So now Tester Bob can post a message. So And over here I can see his message and I can reply. And of course, if I go back to his side, he can see my reply. So this is pretty normal, back and forth chat. This is what you want inside of the system. So now Tester Bob can look for private channels. He can create a private channel. Again, this is all permissions you can, you can tweak for the system. But you see, I have a private channel over here. Now I, want, I might want to add Tester Bob to the channel. So 
I'm going to go, I think, here, and I'm going to say Manage Members. So here's me, and I'm going to add Tester Bob. Tester Bob. Oh, I didn't click Add. That's my fault. There we go. Now Bob should be in the private channel. And he is. He can see it, and he can see the message. So he can say... So back and forth chat. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Um, you can do all kinds of different things inside of these channels and you can set up all kinds of notifications. So Tester Bob, as an individual, when he clicks here, he has a few less options than, than I do as an administrator. So you'll notice he doesn't have the system console, he doesn't have access to all those settings. He has his own account settings. He has get a team invite link, get you know add members to a team, manage members. So a lot of the things that I have, and again, a, a lot of this can be configured inside of the actual settings as the admin. Um, and then you can see the help and the keyboard shortcuts, and of course he can log out. So Tester Bob has quite a bit of ability that he, he can deal with right there. So in his own account settings, he can go and set up notifications in the way that he wants to receive those notifications. So each user should do this to, to kind of set up the way that they want it. Um, this is some basic back and forth, forth chat for Mattermost. Um, I really like it. I think it's got a ton of capability since the last time that I've reviewed it uh, three years ago. They've really done a, a lot of work, which tells me something great about this open source project. Um, they do have a paid model, which is always great, which means that they're sustaining their business. They've got a lot of people contributing to make this better. Um, and just like Rocket Chat, they've got a really active community of people. I think these are some really great options. If you're not wanting to go with Slack or with Teams or with some of those other paid applications that do these kind of things, mm -hmm. uh, Mattermost and Rocket Chat are both amazing. I would say right now, Mattermost on features is definitely ahead of Rocket Chat. Um, I'm interested to see how Mattermost performs because Rocket Chat uses MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database in the background, which is just ridiculously fast um, in scanning and searching and, and doing things. Um, Mattermost is using MySQL in the background, which is a SQL-based database. So I'm, I'm interested, you know, depending on how they set up those tables and, and set up their, their schema, it could be super fast and just rip through those things anyways. I'm just not sure how it's set up. I haven't looked at the back end to see what it looks like. But um, I'm, I'm curious to know, like, when you get up to, you know, 1,000, 5,000 users and millions of messages and things like that, how the performance looks, um, how much you're able to scale out your hardware, what do the costs look like on that. But for a, for a personalized system or a homegrown system, um, I think it's amazing. And then for a system for a small to medium-sized business that you're managing, this would be perfect. Um, their pricing options, I think, would be really, really optimal for somebody who doesn't, again, want to own that IT infrastructure as an IT professional. You might want to offload this type of work to somebody else, and I think there's some great options out there for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay with me. I'm really excited about where we're going and what I'm showing you with this open source software and all the options that are out there for open source and free software. Um, I hope you'll stay with me. So subscribe and like this video and leave me a comment so that I can improve and get better over time. Thank you very much.